but there really are some, some extraordinary perks and, and a great deal of fun that goes along with working on U.S.-Irish relations. Um, but there, also are, there are also a lot of, of important policy initiatives and objectives that we work on together. Um, we share the goal of spurring economic opportunities in our countries, of harnessing the innovative and entrepreneurial spirit of our people. Um, and we know that Ireland has undertaken some very tough economic measures. You've been through a tough period here um, to improve the economic performance. And Ireland is, frankly, an example for other countries within the Eurozone. After six years, your consumer confidence levels are up. Your unemployment levels have dropped to the lowest level in four years. And since American companies do a huge amount of business with Irish companies, um, what's good for you is also good for us. So thank you for everything that you have done on this important issue. A few numbers. We have a very strong integrated economic relationship, and we both stand to gain from the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership. U.S. firms employ more than 115,000 workers in Ireland, while Irish firms employ more than 136,000 workers in the United States. In 2013, two-way trade between the U.S. and Ireland was more than $38 billion, while the total stock of U.S. investment in Ireland surpassed $200 billion in 2012. As we negotiate the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, or TTIP, we seek to add to the already, to the 13 million jobs that are already supported by transatlantic trade. Um, and we seek to add to the, the closeness that comes from that relationship as well. It's not just another trade agreement. It's about strengthening the entire transatlantic relationship. It's a, a critical, a historic, a, a strategic partnership. By strengthening our economies and promoting our shared values of democracy and open markets together through TTIP, the United States and the European Union will be better able to address today's most, most urgent challenges. Both the EU and the United States are committed to making TTIP an agreement that creates opportunities for small and medium-sized businesses. We recognize that small firms are particularly affected by trade barriers, tariffs, and regulatory obstacles, because they have fewer resources than big companies to deal with those kinds of matters. With Ireland, the United States nurtures startup companies and collaborates on cutting edge renewable energy technologies such as smart grids. And I am looking forward, I'm going to be visiting, what's the name of the place? AirGrid later today. I'm really looking forward to seeing some of the innovative things being done there. On both sides of the Atlantic, we tap the potential of technology to improve science, technology, environment, and mathematics education. We call it STEM education. And we encourage youth leaders to be innovators and social entrepreneurs. Every day, American and Irish scientists, artists, entrepreneurs, and innovators collaborate and build on each other's successes. We want to continue developing these natural connections to expand opportunities for innovation by young people and to grow the transatlantic economy. Meanwhile, academic and, and uh, professional partnerships and delegations, like the one led by Special Representative Andrew O'Brien to Limerick and Belfast in January, continue to strengthen the bonds between Ireland, Northern Ireland, and the United States, and to promote economic growth in, both, in, in all of our countries. Events like this year's annual conference on smart people for a smart economy, sponsored by the U.S. Embassy, helped to bring people, a whole community of people together with a stake in transatlantic innovation economy. The Smart People Conference featured companies like LinkedIn, Microsoft, IBM, Google, PayPal, together with academic leaders and uh, policymakers to explore how technology and education can help fill skills gaps. The Taoiseach highlighted at the conference how investing in talent is important for the bilateral relationship and for our shared prosperity. The U.S. Embassy will be working to build on the alliances that we formed at the event. We will facilitate progress on a range of topics, from encouraging more women to pursue STEM education, to ensuring data privacy, to innovating new approaches to education and technology, 
and to creating an ecosystem for this to thrive. Now, in addition to, to all of these economic and innovation issues, we also coordinate and collaborate with Ireland on global issues. Together, the United States and Ireland are, and Europe more broadly, European Union more broadly, are working together to meet shared objectives and common goals. One example of how we're partnering together uh, with Ireland on these issues is the work that we've done on food security and mother and child nutrition, something that I know that IIEA's Tom Arnold has been very involved in. Ireland is also on the front lines of providing humanitarian assistance in Syria, peacekeepers in Mali, and UN operations in the Golan. Closer to home, we share a commitment to keep the peace process in Northern Ireland on track. A word on Ukraine. The April 17th joint statement from Geneva provided an opportunity for Russia and Ukraine to work together, supported by the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, to de-escalate the situation in Eastern Ukraine and make progress toward a diplomatic secure, uh, solution. We have been encouraged by the Ukrainian government's follow-up. Despite constructive Ukrainian follow-through, the hopes raised in Geneva have been dashed so far by Russia's failure to take affirmative steps to meeting its commitments. The United States stands with Ukraine and the fundamental principle that the future of Ukraine must be decided by the Ukrainian people. We will support in every way that we can Ukraine's elections at the end of May so that Ukraine can advance its political transition and look to a peaceful future. In conclusion, let me say this. America needs a strong Europe, and Europe needs a strong America. The greater the transatlantic and global challenges, the more important it is that the United States and Europe address them together. We hope that through our strong bonds of friendship and kinship, the United States and Ireland will continue to harness the energy and common values that characterize this bilateral relationship. We must continue to pursue common goals on the global stage, such as better humanitarian relief, stronger democracy, and economic prosperity. Thank you. Thank you very much, Adi.